welcome friends to a lecture on chemical engineering thermodynamics and today is the starting of a new series of lectures we will be looking into in this series of lecture activity coefficients and how we use activity coefficients to actually calculate vapor liquid equilibrium so this is the first lecture activity coefficient and the margules equation this is professor arvind prasad now for a liquid solution that is non ideal the excess gibbs free energy or the partial excess gibbs free energy of any component i is nothing but ln gamma i now we know that the partial gibbs free energy the partial excess gibbs free energy will be a function of temperature pressure and the moles or the mole fractions of the components in the mixture now to study activity coefficients let's take a vle data of a non ideal mixture this is from glacian and rastogi and it's a non ideal system of dioxan and chloroform where chloroform is the more volatile component and this is the vle that i have extracted from the paper now it has the pressure of the system and the mole fraction of chloroform in the liquid and the vapor phase so as you can see i have plotted the pressure versus the mole fraction in the liquid and the vapor phase and the blue curve is the px curve and the orange curve is the py curve had this solution been an ideal solution the px curve would have been the gray curve now as you can clearly see that this deviates from raoult's law it's a non ideal solution in this case it may be worth noting that the deviation is negative it's known as negative deviation from raoult's law now to calculate the gammas we use the equation gamma 1 is equal to y1 p upon x1 p1 sat similarly the gamma 2 is also calculated because it's a binary solution now we calculate the excess gibbs free energy which is nothing but the summation of the partial gibbs free energy and the mole fractions we also calculate the excess gibbs free energy over rt x1 x2 now let's see what each of these curves get us first of all if we plot x1 versus gamma 1 this is the plot we get and we extend this plot to x is equal to 0 so this would be the infinite dilution gamma of component x1 well at this point x2 is the maximum and at x1 is equal to 0 we can say that x1 is infinitely diluted the similar reasoning applies to the plot of ln gamma 2 now the excess gibbs free energy plot is this so as we can see the excess gibbs free energy goes up and then falls with respect to the concentration now if we plot g upon rt 
x1, x2, what we find is we get a straight line. And if we extend this line to x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 0, it hits the infinite dilution values of gum. Now, these are some of the interesting observations we get when we plot this. Therefore, this motivates us to write a linear equation for GE upon RT x1, x2. If we write the equation G upon RT is equal to A21 x1 plus A12 x2 x1 x2, now this is a linear equation. Now it may be noted that whenever I put x1 is equal to 0 or x2 is equal to 0, this equation goes to 0, the LHS goes to 0, which is valid and it's perfectly logical. Now, if we divide it by x1 and x2, if we put x2 is equal to 0, that is the infinite dilution value of 2, we get a2, 1, right? We get a value of a2, 1. Now, this would be the value of the constant that is ln gamma 1 or uh, sorry ln gamma 2 infinity will be a21. Similarly, ln gamma 1 infinity will be a12. Now, we can differentiate this equation. Now, this differential is well known. We can differentiate multiplying this by n and differentiate it with respect to n1, with respect to n2, holding n2 constant here, holding n1 constant here, and we can get back the equation for ln gamma 1 and ln gamma 2. The equations are written in the left. Therefore, we find that the gammas are a function of constants, which can be found by the infinite dilution values, and also, it is a function of the mole fraction of 1 and 2. Now, this equation is known as the Margulis equation. And as discussed earlier, the limiting conditions for dilution are ln gamma 1 infinity is equal to a12 and ln gamma 2 infinity is equal to a2. 1. What we saw was a Margulis 2 parameter model. Please note that this has no theoretical foundation. I have merely taken the value of excess Gibbs free energy and fit it into a straight line to get the parameters. This has no theoretical foundation. Therefore, we need to understand one thing that the constants that we get for the VLE, that is A12 and 2A21, are going to be experimented. Each time when we get a fresh data on some other temperature, we will have to again do this entire process and get the value of A21 and A12. Therefore, it is understood that it is only valid for the temperature at which the experiment was performed. Therefore, if we have these constants and it is known that at what temperature these constants were found, we can reconstruct the boiling pressure curve. But this is the strict limitation. We cannot plot dxy curves knowing the constants because the constants are valid only for a particular temperature and they have to be determined experimentally. Now, what is a Margulis 1 parameter model? Well, if you take A21 is equal to A12 is equal to A, we get the following equation. Ln gamma 1 is equal to A 
x2 square and ln gamma 2 is equal to a x1 square. Now this is a Margules one parameter model. Now let's take a simple example and see how does this Margules two parameter model or the Margules one parameter or model allow us to do some calculations. For a binary system at a temperature T, we have the saturation vapor pressure of component one as 1240 kilopascal and the saturation vapor pressure of component 2 as 40.50 kilopascals. The Margules 1 parameter model equations are given ln gamma 1 is equal to 1.8 x2 square and ln gamma 2 is equal to 1.8 x1 square. Now let us calculate the boiling pressure of a mixture which has 40 percent component 1. The pressure is going to be 0.4 into exponential 1.8 x2 square. Well, gamma 1 will be exponential 1.8 x2 square into 1240, which is nothing but the saturation vapor pressure of 1 plus 0 0.6 into exponential 1.8 into 0 0.4 the whole square, which is nothing but x1 into 40.50. Now this will be 980.62, therefore the boiling pressure at the temperature T for this particular system will be 980.62 kilopascals. Well that is the end of my lecture. Please like and subscribe my lectures, they keep me motivated and do write your comments. Thanks a lot, have a great day.